It's good to see you today. Oops, except I can't see you, but you can see me. And that's, I guess, what counts in this picture today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're happy that we can be in your living rooms or wherever it is that you're watching us today and bring you a lesson about it is good to worship God together. God. Yeah. Isn't it good to worship God together? Yeah, but yes. we can't see them. We can't see them, but you and I can worship God together. But we are looking forward to the day when we can worship God with you and see you in the same room with us. Won't that be great, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. But but invisible. Yeah. So I can't so, see them. We're going to move on with the lesson. So what I want you to do, friends, is to get some clean socks. At first, Jackson said, ew. I said, well, they're clean, buddy. Clean socks and roll them up into a ball. You're going to use those first. But the other things I need you to get are, I'm going to tell you everything, and then I want you to gather. I'll show you a picture of everything I want you to get. And you can pause the video and go collect it, and then we can move on. Paper. You, it would be better if it's uh, not like a notebook, but loose paper. Markers, scissors, kid size or grown up size, depending on who's going to use them. Tape, a Bible, a pen to write with, and a box. And if you don't have a shoe box, it could be a big box or a little box. It could be a Tupperware box, it could be an old cereal box. Any kind of box that you can tape the paper to and decorate will be perfect. All right, so I'm going to show you a picture of all those supplies and then I want you to pause your video and go grab those supplies. Let's do this. Friends, one of the first things we want to do today is to talk about God sightings. If you've seen any of our lessons so far, you've heard me talk about how important it is to remember the good things that God is doing, and we call those God sightings. So I want you to um, start thinking about some of the ways that you have seen God at work showing his goodness in the world around you or in your family, in your life lately, and we're gonna be able to share those with each other. First of all, Jackson and I were just talking about what our God sighting was. We did something pretty fun last night. We, I did tell them. You wanna tell them, okay, you tell them. So, Mommy got me out of bed, and we saw a movie in star, and it was the space station. We saw a moving, it looked like a star. It was the International Space Station. Yeah, and I thought it looked bigger. You thought it looked bigger? Yeah. Wow, it was moving like this guy. And you know what? That is something that people made, but God gave us really smart brains to know how to figure out how to get that built in outer space and to have people, probably today, what, last night when we saw it, there were astronauts in that space station doing experiments, learning about the world that God has made even beyond Earth and in space. And that just made us think about how awesome it is that God has made this big, huge universe for us to explore. Right, Jackson? What do you want to tell them? So, kids, so when the astronauts do a spacewalk, they're tethered, right? They're tethered usually with a spacewalk. Is that what you were thinking about when you were playing with the cord for my dress? Yeah. But sometimes they're not tethered. What do they have to wear if they're not tethered? A jet pack. A jet pack if they're not tethered. So that's right. Why? It moves them, pushes them through the weightlessness space. Okay. All right. So that was our God sighting from just last night. I want you, everybody in your family, to take some time to think about how you've seen God at work. And I also want you to grab some of that paper we talked about. Instead of using a journal this week, we're going to end up using some of these things later on. So I want you to write out either a picture or with words, those things that you are thankful for that you have seen God doing. Write as many as you would like, share them with each other, talk about it together, and thank God together for what he's been doing. We're gonna pause the video and give you a chance to do that right now at home. Unpause the video and grab some socks that you 
collected. Ew. And every person, this is something I didn't say before, every um, person in your family that wants to play with us is going to need their own ball of socks. Okay, so if you didn't get one for every person that's gonna play, go ahead and pause the video again and do that now. If you already have your socks ready, then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I want you to line up along one side of the room you're in, and I want you to throw, there shouldn't be anybody in front of you, I want you to throw the pair of socks across the room, and then I want you to run as fast as you can to try and catch those socks before they land on the ground. Do you think they can do it, Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. So I want you to try to do that. We're gonna show you a video of Jackson working really hard to try to do that too. So that's up next. <laughs> you missed it. Can you try it again? Oh, is that hard to do? Try it again, see if, see if you can do it. <laughs> How fast can you run? Whoa, hard to catch, isn't it? Yeah. Would it be easier if we did it together? Yeah. So friends, how was that? Is that a little bit tough to do? This time we want you to do it again, but you don't need as many balls of socks. But I want you to pair up with somebody in your family. And if there are not an even number of people in your family, a, gr a grown up can sit out this game. But as many people as want to play it, if there are five people in your family, have four people play, pair them up and have one person sit out and take turns. Then I want you to toss the ball of socks back and forth to each other for a little bit. You could try some fun stuff like overhand, underhand, behind your back, uh, closing your eyes. Oh, See what you can do to make yeah. it fun to play catch with the ball of socks together. And you can see Jackson and I trying to do that next. Yay. Good job, throw it to me. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna actually catch it. Oopsies, it's a narrow bow. <laughs> activity was pretty fun, wasn't it? Yeah, are you out of breath? If you need to take a moment to catch your breath, <sighs> take a deep breath. And then I want you to think about some questions with me. After each question, you're gonna pause the video and talk with your family about the answer, okay? I'm gonna grab my pause sign so I'm ready. The first question is, was it more fun to play that game by yourself or was it better when you played it together? Pause the video and talk about that with your family. All right, unpause. Now the next question is, what are some other examples of things you can think about in life that are more fun to do or better, always better when we're together? Pause the video and talk about that question with you. All right, unpause. Now the last question for now is, what is something that once the coronavirus time is over and we're able to be together again, what is something you're looking forward to doing together with other people? Pause the video and talk about that with your family. Green, green. Something that I miss doing with other people that I'm really looking forward to once we're able to be together again is to worship God together. I think it's really good to be able to do it alone. I enjoy doing that alone too, but I think it's usually can often be a lot more sweet or special or um, 
connecting with my heart even more when I'm with the people of God, the people that love God together in worship, whether that be listening to his word together or singing together or celebrating his goodness and together. I, I think it's always you know, better together for me. Do you know what I miss the most? What? I miss having hugs and having kisses and playing. Yeah. But they're things. working on the park. They're working on the park on our campus and we're gonna go to play again with neighbors on the park campus at the campus, aren't we? <gasps> wow! One of the ways that the people of God worshipped him together in the Bible was building something called the Ark of the Covenant together. And so we're gonna look at that Bible story together. The Ark of the Covenant. When Jackson and I were talking about this and we got to the classroom today to do our video, he found this. He said, look, mom, you can use this in the story. It's Noah's Ark. Friends, those of you who have heard this story before about the Ark of the Covenant will know, is Noah's Ark and the Ark of the Covenant the same? They're not the same. The Ark, they have the same word, but the Ark of the Covenant was not a boat. It was a box that God gave the people instructions of how he wanted them to make it. And it was something that was a rem reminding them of God's goodness to them in the past and God's presence was going to come and dwell there when they would gather and they would worship him with that ark behind a curtain to protect them from the glory of God. But in that ark were um, Aaron's staff. This is the flannel graph pieces I have. So Aaron was Moses' brother. So the staff reminded them of how God guided them through the wilderness when they left Egypt and the Ten Commandments were in there as well to remind them of what God had asked them to do, how to live life in a way that would honor God. And there was a jar, it probably wasn't a glass jar because I don't think they had glass back then, but they might've had other ways of holding things. And they would have a jar of manna that they had collected. Remember how God gave them food to eat when there was no other food. They would wake up in the morning and there would be this, what is it? Fish. Fish, it wasn't fish. It was manna on the ground and they would collect it and they would be able to bake bread out of it. And Ew. so <laughs> they saved some of that in a jar to put inside the Ark of the Covenant as well. And it looked a bit like, this is a flannel graph piece of inside the temple, the Holy of Holies was behind the curtain. Yep. And this here is the Ark of the Covenant. You can see it's a gold box and it had, um, it had holes on it for people to hold it if they needed to move to a different location. Cause you know, they traveled a lot in tents or they would sleep in tents and they would walk or ride their animals and put everything, pack everything up and go from place to place. And they would take the ark with them. And also on top of the ark were these big, beautiful golden angels as well. And inside the box were those things I talked about. So what we're going to do today is talk a little bit more about that. Read Exodus 25, 10 through 22 together as a family at home. Okay, friends, you're not going to be able to see my face fully for this one, but it'll be easier this way. I want you to grab your box and your tape and your scissors, your markers and your paper. And then we're going to, um, Jackson and I are gonna decorate one together. And at your house, if everyone in your family wants to make one, you can, or you can make it together if you would like. Jackson and I are gonna make it together, which should be fun yeah. to do together. And we're just gonna, this is gonna take a while. So Jackson and I are gonna take our time to make it and you can make yours while we make ours here in the classroom, okay? So I'm gonna take some paper and I'm gonna tape it onto our box. I might actually tape it this way, I think. No, it's I'm gonna tape it onto my box first and then I'm gonna color it. I'm gonna draw angels and things like that on there to remind us a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant was super, 
super special because it was about the presence of God. So I had thought a little bit even about doing this activity and wondered, hmm, I want to make sure that you guys know that the Ark of the Covenant was something really important and really special. Do you want to start coloring some yellow on there, Jackson? It was really, really special. Something we would call sacred, where God's presence was going to dwell with his people there. So it's something that, even though for right now we're doing something um, that we're making ourselves, do you know God asked the people to have really fine craftsmen, people that really knew what they were doing to create the Ark of the Covenant. And so it was a very, very special thing. So we do our best work to remember. I'm going to cut some paper here. Jackson, could you hold your marker here and color this paper for a minute while I use some of this to cover this one? I have runaway markers. So I hope that at home you're making this together, figuring out how you're going to do it together at home with the box that you have. I have one way my Thank you. I'm going to fold this corner here like that. <laughs> more paper to put on. Jackson's going to decorate some more paper here for us. A covenant, I am a band. Who said that band? Can you color this paper so that I, I will take, can I use the one that you've colored? to put it through beautiful decorations on the box. Can you color the next one? Now friends, this does not have to be perfect. I'm going to do a simple job. You can take as long as you would like to at home. And if you need more time, you can always pause the video and you can take as much time as you need. So Jackson, we're gonna keep the marker on the paper instead of on the table, okay? okay. I'm gonna try to draw some angels. I smell celery. Do you smell celery? Or spelled celery? You spelled celery? Yeah. No, good. And do an angel like triangle and some wings and um, some angels here. If there are other things that you want to use at home, other art supplies you have to decorate your box, you are welcome to do that. The intro is so bright that it makes the sun look the purple. Oh yeah, wow, colorful. So their boxes, their Ark of the Covenant actually was just one of them. It was golden, right? But this could be as many colors as you would like. So we want to look together at, now that you have made your box, your art, however yours looks at home, let me show it to me on the screen and I'll take a look here. Very nice work, friends. Can you see all of their arts that they made? Yes, I do. <laughs> all right. We're going to look at another Bible passage where King David had the people take this art and he had, this is called David's Tabernacle. They had built a tent. Can I see? There was the outside tent and the inside tent, and the people would um, have worship of God there. And the Ark of the Covenant would be inside this tent. And this is what the inside of that tent looked like, what I showed you earlier, the Ark of the Covenant. And there's a story in 1 Chronicles 16, verses 1 through 36, where David gathered the people together and they worshiped God together and they celebrated that they were gonna follow God together. And they made an agreement 
to follow in God's ways together as a people. And so uh, I want you to pause the video and I want you to read together with your family, 1 Chronicles 16, 1 through 36. So something really special that the Israelites did in this story was they had a parade, a celebration, a commemoration, the big word, together, of recognizing God together and worshiping him all together. Parades are pretty special. We've seen a few parades before, haven't we, Jackson? How it gets your heart kind of excited when there's really special parts and there's music and things that really help us to um, celebrate things together. And I'm saying that we're together a lot because the whole point today we're talking about, friends, is that it is good to worship God together. I'm really looking forward to being together with you to worship God. So you saw in the story how the people did that in First Chronicles. We're going to worship God even more together. All right, friends, we're going to do like the Israelites did and worship God together, even though it's on video and we're all in different places. As we watch this, I want you to listen for when you hear me say the words, the Lord. And when you hear that, you're going to say, and you're going to raise up your arm, we worship you. Can we you worship you. We worship you. you. Right. So we're going to look at in first chronicles part of that story you just read with your family in first chronicles 16 25 it says for great is the lord for great is the lord actually i don't want you to repeat me i just want you to say we worship you we so, worship for great is the lord we worship, worship you. you lift up your arm jack we worship you good job and greatly to be praised and he is to be feared above all gods or honored or worshiped above all gods for all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. People would worship things that weren't really good. We God. worship you. But we worship who? The Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But the Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Made the heavens. Splendor and majesty or like beauty and glory and greatness are before him. And strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe, which means to give to the Lord. We worship you. Oh, families of the peoples. That's you guys at home. Ascribe, give to the Lord. We worship you. Glory and strength. Where's your strength? Ascribe to the Lord the glory. Oh, the Lord. We worship you. you. <laughs> the glory do his name. Bring an offering of worship and come before him. Worship the Lord. We, we worship, worship you. you. In the splendor of holiness, tremble before him all the earth. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. And let them say among the nations, the Lord. We worship you. The Lord reigns. That is the end of the verse that we wanted to read. So one of the ways that we can worship God is even just talking about his greatness, yeah. his goodness together. And when we do that together, we help remind each other about God's greatness. And sometimes we can think of things that others might have forgotten that can encourage each other to remember how great God is. And so yeah. that's one of the reasons why worshiping together can make it extra special because we are able to help each other remember God greatness and turn our eyes together on him <laughs> speaking of eyes so i want you to get your ark that you made together with your family and i want you to grab the god sightings that you wrote out earlier and i want you to take some even more time now because we want to have a lot of pieces of paper inside your ark you know remember that the people in israel put in their commandments, they put the jar of manna, they put Aaron's staff in there, and those things were to remind them of God's goodness and how he had been faithful to them in a hard time. I want you guys to write out how God has been good and faithful to you in this season and cut each one, each piece of paper out individually for the few words that you want to say about each different thing or draw a picture. Put those in your ark. And then put this ark in a place in your house where your family is going to see it 
every day. I think at our house, we're probably gonna put it on our kitchen table. And I think maybe at dinner time, we'll open up the ark or maybe even at breakfast. Or if we do enough pieces, we could do it at breakfast, lunch, and dinner so that we have lots of times to do this together. We can open it up and pull out one of the pieces of paper. And our God sighting was that International Space Station sighting that reminded us about how God made even the great universe and all the stars for people to explore. And so we would write that on our piece of paper, we'd put it in there, we'd pull it out, and we would remember together the awesome things that we have been seeing God do and just thank him together for, for those things again. So if you have a lot of those in your box together as a family, it's something that your family can do to keep your eyes fixed on him this week at home. So we hope you have a great week remembering God's greatness together with your family. And we're going to do that in our family at the Lawrence house. And for now, we're going to say bye, friends. Have bye. a good week. Bye.